I've always wondered how similar or different two different countries are. For example, one might intuitively know that Germany is more like the United States than Iran, but less like the United States than Canada. The index is a statistically based way to measure this. The index weights five major aspects of countries, their demographics, culture, politics, technology, and geography. In addition, these aspects were divided into two parts, quantity and quality. For instance, Romania and Ireland have the same amount of cars per person. However, Ireland drives on the left, while Romania drives on the right. Another example of this quantity and quality is Bosnia and Jamaica. Bosnia and Jamaica have a similar percentage of agricultural land. However, Jamaica predominantly grows coconuts, while Bosnia mostly grows corn. The demographic section considers the individuals in a country and their personal characteristics. This includes the country's average age, their average height and weight, as well as the country's gender ratio. For instance, in some countries, uh, they have more males than females, such as in Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, where there are around three males for every female. While other countries like in Eastern Europe, there are more females than males. The demographic section also considers the race and ethnicity of people in the country. Ethnicity being defined as their native language and traditional religious background. In addition, the demographic section includes the marriage and divorce rates in the country, the birth rate, and the household size. It also considers how wealthy and educated the people are in the country. Furthermore, demographics includes the employment rate and typical occupation of people in the country. In countries like Nigeria, Nepal, and Papua New Guinea, the vast majority of the people are farmers, whereas in Argentina, Germany, and Australia, most people work in the service sector. There are also some countries with a large portion of the population working in industry, like in Canada, Brunei, and Oman. Um, a second aspect that I looked at was a country's culture. This is a very difficult aspect to look at because it's hard to put a statistic on a country's culture, but I divided it up into different categories, one including behavior, personality of the people in the country, what their typical conduct is, if there's a lot of violence in that country, and also um, if there's a lot of drug use there. Another aspect of culture that I looked at was the communication used in that country. Now, this is slightly different from demographics. In the demographics, when you're looking at language, you're looking at language they're using at home. But in culture, um, we're sort of looking at which language they're using to communicate with people outside of their home. So, for instance, in Nigeria, there's many different languages spoken there but their common lingua franca is English. This goes for many other countries. I also looked at countries' traditions, like demographics. We also looked at religion for culture too, but for culture, we also included if people are not religious, because you can certainly be Christian but not be practicing Christian in the demographic category. But as far as how somebody practices the religion, that sort of more goes into the culture. And not only did we look at their denomination, whether they're Catholic, Protestant. Also looking at different customs. For instance, some countries have different holidays than other countries, both religious and secular holidays. Also circumcision practices. This is a very interesting aspect that can cross different religious and racial lines. For instance, in Korea, most people are circumcised, whereas in Japan, most people are not. But circumcision is originally came from the Middle East. Uh, another aspect of culture that I looked at was recreation. Sports is a huge part of people's culture. So I looked at what the favorite sport of each country was, which sports they really liked to take part in, which Olympic sports they got medals in, and how successful they were at sporting events. Then I think a huge part of culture, everyone would agree, is the food and drinks they're eating. I looked at how much meat each country eats and also what kinds of meat they eat, what kind of dairy products they eat. Do they eat a lot of eggs, cheese, or not dairy products at all? Do they eat a lot of fruits or vegetables? And also, what kind of starches do they eat? For instance, some countries eat a lot more rice versus other countries eat a lot more wheat. A third aspect that I looked at was the politics of a country and the government. For instance, how the government is set up. Is it a monarchy? Is it a democracy? Is it a dictatorship? And what methods are used to select the leaders of the country, whether it was by popular vote, whether it's by appointments or heredity? 
Then I also looked at the various policies that the country has. For instance, marriage, marriage laws, whether you can have a gay marriage, uh, whether you can practice polygamy, also obscenity laws, whether prostitution is legal or not, whether you can have an abortion or not. And there's a gradient of all of these. A gun control and also the legality of drugs. Furthermore, governments require people to do certain things. Some countries require people to do military service. Others require them to do jury duty, a mandate that you go to school for a much longer period of years than others. Some countries have mandatory voting. You must vote in those countries. In others, it's completely optional. And even in others, there's no voting. I'm also looking at the tax obligation of different countries, whether there's a lot of taxes on people or not. But to go to the other end of the spectrum, there's also a lot of things that governments do for their people. For instance, some governments entitle people to health care, to education, to welfare, and to pensions. And that's another aspect that I looked at. Finally, the enforcement of these policies varies from one country to another. For instance, some countries have very authoritarian governments that have a lot of censorship, while others are more open. Some countries have a higher rule of law and also looking at the legal system. Some countries use what's called civil law. Other countries use common law. And also looking at the punishment. Some countries don't allow there to be a death penalty. And some countries don't even allow there to be people in prison for life either, versus other countries have both. Another aspect that I looked at was cooperation between countries. For instance, some countries like in Europe have a common currency or are a part of a trade block. Another aspect I looked at was defense alliances, how much military alliances there are between different countries. For instance, NATO is a famous military alliance where European and United States and other countries come together to afford a shared military, looked at border control and which countries have a very lax border control policy versus which have a very strict border control. And also looking at immigration policy, how easy is it to immigrate to the country? Some countries it's very easy and other countries it may take you more than 10 years and be very difficult to attain citizenship. The fourth way that I looked at how countries could be different from each other would be their technology and their infrastructure. I first looked at their water and their plumbing, their water usage, their water quality, the percentage of people that have a good sanitation in their homes. Another aspect that I looked at was the electricity of a country. How is the electricity created? How much electricity is used? What voltage was there? Also, you always know when you're traveling to different countries, you need an adapter usually for their plugs. So that was another factor. A third aspect that I looked at was the communication how much radio, telephone, television communication there is and the internet and the different platforms. For instance, some countries use certain websites more than others. Another aspect of technology that I looked at was transportation. How many cars are there in a country per person? Also looked at trains, how many passenger trains there are in the country. Also looked at the different types of cars and trains there are in different countries. For instance, some countries drive on the left side of the road versus other countries drive on the right side of the road. And furthermore, for trains, there's a big difference in the infrastructure of countries for trains. The rail gauge is different, meaning the distance between the two different railroad tracks is different in different countries. And that can have an effect on what kind of train vehicle is being used there. Then I also looked at airplanes and how much airport infrastructure each country has. Furthermore, I looked at the medical capability of a country, how sophisticated their hospital infrastructure is, and also the military capability of a country and how sophisticated uh, their military is. You know, some countries spend a lot more money on the military and others don't even have an active military. And then the final aspect that I looked at was geography, where the country is on the map what continent it's on, what tectonic plate the country is on, what hydrologic region it's in, does its water flow to the Atlantic or the Pacific. Then I also looked at terrain. Uh, Is the country generally flat or very mountainous? Is it high elevation or low elevation? I also looked at water, how much coastline a country has, how far are most of the land from the water. Also, the amount of lakes that a country has. Furthermore, I looked at climate. 
temperature and precipitation are the two main factors, but also the combination of the two, which creates different climates like the desert, rainforests, polar regions, et cetera, et cetera. I also looked at how people inhabit the country. For instance, is the country densely populated? And furthermore, are people bunched up in the cities or are they spread out in rural areas? And I also looked at animals. Is there a high variety of animals in the country or a low variety? Some countries have more similar animals to each other than others. There's different sort of animal regions in the world. Furthermore, I looked at the vegetation of a country. What kind of plants are in the country? Is there a lot of wilderness? Is there a lot of agriculture? And what kind of agriculture is being grown in that country? What kind of wild plants natively grow in that country? And finally, I looked at the human impact of the geography. For instance, how many skyscrapers there are in the urban areas, uh, how much pollution there is in the country, whether there's a lot of light pollution, air pollution, those kind of things. So those were my five main categories that I looked at. Um, obviously, there's no way to do this scientifically, but I tried to make sort of, sort of look at all the different aspects evenly. And so what I hope to do in future episodes is bring to you country by country, what are the most similar countries to a certain country and what are the least similar countries to a certain country. I think that's actually very interesting too, to know sort of what the opposite country is to your country. Yeah, so I'd appreciate you to follow and subscribe to this to see future videos.